Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new series of Crusader Kings 3 here on the Lord Master channel. I am Lord Master and this here will be a different series than what you typically have seen of my past Crusader Kings 3 playthroughs where I have this tendency to um, expand to the amount of territory that I would like based on, you know, history and one's culture here. But now, what I'm, what my plans for that series is, feels like it's going to be almost the complete opposite, in the sense of, I'd rather have the territory integrity of the region that I live in, and do not expand beyond, for whatever reason, as, you know, maybe you should focus on your own home, your own home region, rather than try to expand to anyone else's. Of course, what I'm talking about here is um, this is a new series. As you, you see these people in the middle, like that is the man that I'm playing as, um, Maharada Vijaya Bahu. More on him in a moment, um, along with his wife and his son. Although he may be a little shorter than compared to you know some of the others, that's just based on the standing you know on the position here. But anyways. This is the first. Uh, the, this is the first uh, series to feature in the, at least here in the Lore Master channel with the Wards and Wardens DLC, which in Wards and Wardens, child rulers and their guardians take center stage, rear young princes and nobles in a world where internal glory is a battle away, and danger lurks in every shadow. So, now look, I will hit continue, but I want to show you something on the new game screen here. Um, and that's here in the rice portion of Eastern. Compare that to H67, um, where you got these amount of recommended characters at the start, but here at 1066, this is the man here, the Jaya Bahu, um, who is the Duke of Rohana, in which he's of Sihala culture, a Theravada Buddhist faith. And this is what this early part of the series is going to be about. This is the Sri Lanka series. Sri Lanka's old capital lies in ruins. The island in anarchy as Chola invaders and Sinhala warlords struggle for power. From this chaos emerges the rebel prince, Vijayabahu, who would expel the Cholas and establish the Polonara kingdom. He and his successors spent decades helping the island's Buddhist community divided by petty rivalries between its ancient monasteries, unite and reform. It is one thing to defeat the Cholas, it is another to restore order. How will you heal this broken land and the divisions within the island's Buddhist Sangha? As the rice flavor pack focus, such as Magda, which adds some Buddhist flavor to it as it's already been there for a few years now, uh, Sakatra, even though that's way over there, and that will play no part in this series, but it's the Maritime Silk Road thing is what's relevant to it. And of course, the newest flare pack, Sri Lanka, in which now we hit back, and uh, we will go on to the uh, continue from this very beginning on September 15th, 1066, as this Sri Lanka series. I mean, at least the first episode of the Sri Lanka series will be about Vijayabahu's rebellion, and as well as telling you some of the parts of the uh, Buddhist Sangha before that becomes a focus for the remainder of this series. So let's go. Bear in mind, um, loading does take quite a bit of time, which by the way, the mod list is on the description on the video of mine. I even had to make slight changes in the files myself, as per told by description here. Now, this is what this series is going to be mainly about, the Sri Lankan Sangha. Since the days of Ashoka, Tambapani has been renowned as a holy Buddhist island esteemed by Buddhists all over the world. However, over the centuries, the island's Sangha, or Buddhist community, 
has been divided due to conflicts between the island's three major monasteries, the Mahavihara, the Abhyagiri, and Jetavana, who compete for followers, status, land, and royal patronage. Under the leadership of House Vijayabahu, we will discern truths from falsehoods, protect the righteous, and punish heretics, maybe even unite the Sangha of Tambapani one day. I am one of the involved participants in this Sri Lankan Sangha. And, uh, however, if you were to start the game in the 867 start date, the phase would start off in accumulation. But here on 1066, um, the region is currently in a phase of degeneration. Your actions and those of the other participants will determine the future phases of the struggle and its ending. So, let me show you um, what this means, since, of course, the word degeneration doesn't apply, you know, anything positive. <laughs> There's only three phases, degeneration, accumulation, and purification. So right now, we're start off as the lowest of the low. So inspect each icon to view this struggle phase effects. So for this struggle, this is what happens now. For war effects, for those involved. Fabricating claims in the struggle region costs prestige instead of gold. It unlocks the border raid castles belly and unlocks the forced vassalization castles belly. For culture effects, promote culture proceeds slower within the struggle region. And here's faith. Um, the common faith effects the prominence of each Sri Lankan monastery changes by a random amount between minus three to zero every year meaning the prominence of all three of these aforementioned monasteries is going to keep going down no matter what each passing year unless those involved can try to you know increase the prominence of whichever they're patronizing with and uh, convert the faith and county proceeds slower within the struggle region and for all involved this also leads to the uh, <laughs> decrease in monthly piety by minus 20 percent so you'll gain less piety over time and for the other effects, oh, there is plenty. Development growth has been halved, and so is control growth. But castle buildings and holding construction costs are cheaper. While increased costs for city buildings and holdings are the same for temples. Especially temples much more. And in effect for all those involved, um, it unlocks the adduct scheme against evolved rulers, fabricate hook schemes, claim throne scheme, and ferment revolt interaction against the Volvos, all of that. So that means at least you don't have to go use that skullduggery focus if you're an intrigue ruler, so there's no reason to have these at the, as perks to get You already have them right here. And a claim throne thing, that usually comes from the, uh, the side over of administrator. But, however, we're starting as an independent ruler, rather than as a vassal. The karma of so many, now intertwined. Which, again, this is part of the Rice mod, the Regional Immersion and Cultural Enrichment mod. This is 29 flavor packs, and this is the newest flavor pack, Sri Lanka, Abode of Lions. The update adds new content for Sri Lanka, and Buddhist face with the Pali Canon doctrine like Theravada. Much of it revolves around the new struggle, the Sri Lankan Sangha. Rice also updates the game to CK3 1.10 and awards awards to DLC, adds general flavor for India, and revamps the old Silk Road communities mechanic, such as more off-map African and Asian cultures, many adapted from the Rajas of Asia mod, which expands the game map into Asia. Which, by the way, Rogers of Asia is not one of the mods that I'm using. I've considered it, but I found out it's kind of too buggy um, of, of, as far as compatibility is concerned. And I may have conflict with the other mods and a few other things, which would have been nice to have, but it will not do. But I do have something else that would make up a little bit for it. But, but it, it's only because that would, it is relevant in Sri Lanka. So... Sounds good. And here's this quote. Better than a thousand hollow words is one word that brings peace. This is from Dhammapada, 
part of the Pali Canon of Theravada Buddhism. And of course, this is the second series of CK3 that I play on, which features Dark Ages. Greetings. You're about to start a journey a bit different from the Vanilla Crusader Kings. Hopefully, the story is weighed by the engine number crunching, and your choices will lead to more varied and interesting results. The difficulty also increases as several systems are designed to turn the player's character's life harder and more challenging. Have fun and enjoy the ride. You gain one prestige, piety, gold, and renown. Just for starters. So you may have noticed already, compared to Vanilla, that that we know the political situation of what happened in 1066 is that Sri Lanka is divided with the northern half under Chola control and the southern half controlled by uh, Vijaya Bahu, Duke of Rohana, or in this case, Maharada. Now, it, it's, it like, it's like, why are there two enclaves up north of Matale and uh, Vani? Well, I'm using this mod called More Provinces Expanded. Because in Vanilla, the number of counties in Sri Lanka is 8. And in this one, it's 10. And additionally, let me zoom in. I go to Rohana, for example. Look at this. More holdings. Same for here. And there. And there. I simply wanted to make, you know, the Sri Lankan series just to feel a little more at home with, you know, where you're at. Instead of eight counties, now you got ten. And you got a lot more holdings inside each of these counties just to make the island and nation feel a little bigger than it looks. Then the more provinces expanded, the uh, DLC, uh, mod is uh, adds 7,000 plus counties. Like, go over to Italy, for example, southern Italy. <laughs> I'm just showing you as an example. Um, like, there's a Malfi, which that county did not exist before. And there's a holding you could build. <laughs> and over in Salerno, this has a lot more counties. More than a ruler can hold, but plenty of more holdings inside. <laughs> Again, that's just an example. And so, yes, that means it really expanded upon most of Europe, be it from the areas of, you know, the Romans, and Francia, and Britannia, all those examples. <laughs> Although they have not really done much of expansion towards the Tehran region and Tibet, as far as my knowledge is concerned. And also, it should be noted that in 1066, um, not only we're at war with the Chola, as this is Vijaya Bahu's rebellion, this is also the year where England, on the other side, is defending itself against the Norwegian invasion of England and the Norman conquest of England by, you know, from Normandy. That's one of the ongoing uh, conflicts of 1066, and the other is the Seljuk invasion against the Romans um, for Armenia. Invasion of Armenia uh, from the Celtics to Armenia. <laughs> and then here is the third ongoing conflict of 1066, Vijaya Bahu's Rebellion, which had started five days ago, but in actuality, it started, oh, 11 years earlier than that. And with the more provinces expanded, those two enclaves of Mantele and Vani are not involved, so consider it as neutral, like they're not taking part or joining either side of the war, they keep it to themselves, <laughs> just based on the situation, but in actuality there's more to it than that. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about the man himself. Uh, Maharada Vijaya Bahu. He is just, as Vijaya Bahu has a strong sense of justice. He is zealous. Religious conviction burns bright at the center of Vijaya Bahu. And he's also ambitious, as he knows what he wants, and he's not afraid to try and get it. He's also a brilliant strategist, 
as the battlefield is the domain of Vijayabahu, and no martial matter is beyond his knowledge. Also an unyielding defender. Vijayabahu knows one thing above all else. This is as far as the enemy goes. And he's also strong. Through training and perseverance, Vijayabahu has been granted a strong body. Mind you, it's a physical trait, not inheritable. Now, Vijayabahu, and notice that his birth name is uh, Kithi, but it's pronounced as uh, Kirthi. So yes, he was born at around 1039, but keep in mind, he's 36 years old, so the game says he's born in 1030. But in real life, he was born nine years later, so he should have been a little more younger. Same goes for his uh, wife. Mahadevi Lilavati. She's a Kanauji. Which she's lustful, brave, and vengeful. Also a brilliant strategist just like him. But of course she cannot lead armies. But she'll definitely help me on the martial field. But again, Kitty was born in the Ruhana uh, Principality under Chola occupation long ago. In which, before we talk a little more about that, now... In the 11th century, the Chola Empire of Southern India reached its uh, imperial s state, which, look at the size of the Chola, I mean, it's a kingdom too, but in history, it's an empire. And yes, they do control the Andaman Islands as well there. So, Emperor Raja Raja I invaded and annexed the um, kingdom of Anuradhapura of 992 AD. While his son, Emperor Rajendra, invaded Ruhana in 1017, capturing King Mahinda V. The uh, kingdom became subdatriate of the Cholas, while Kasampa VI, the son of Mahinda, ascended the throne. Now look at here. This is his father, Vijayabahu's father, uh, Mogala. And Kasampa was his grandfather, and uh, Mahinda is great-grandfather and yes they are part of the house Lambakana which is which is extinct unfortunately and yet this is part of house Vijayabahu founded by his father and that's our house model goodness through the sword which is kind of fitting based on the symbol the lion and the sword which is the symbol on the modern flag of Sri Lanka as we know today as a lion and sword well, now in the early life when uh, when Kiriti defeated uh, when he was 15 years old he defeated the last of such rulers Lokasar with the aim of becoming the king of Ruhana which again is down here in the south in the Singhalese homeland and subsequently in 1055, he became the king of Ruhana, and that's when he attained the name Vijayabahu. And over those years, the Chola army frequently attacked Vijayabahu's troops in Ruhana. However, he managed to free Ruhana from the Cholas uh, by 1058 to take it under his complete control, which was from the early years of the Singhalese revolt, which started on 1055, and in actual history, it lasted up till 1070. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit of the background for historical context of what goes on in this situation. So they've been fighting for a better part of the decade. But the southern half of Sri Lanka, or Tambapani, as its name, as it was back then, which, mind you, ladies and gentlemen, especially for you Sri Lankan audience, um, is that the name Sri Lanka did not exist during the Middle Ages. It was called Tambapani as the name of the island itself. And of course this state and soon when we reunite the land, defeat the Cholas, it'll be the Kingdom of Polonava instead of the Kingdom of Anuradhapura which had existed for nearly 1500 years. 
since around 400 BC. Long lived kingdom. Yes. And so now, there's a lot more to discuss regarding the uh, Sri Lanka Sag Sangha struggle. With all this you could do with try to steer one way to accumulation or purification. As long as we get out of this uh, degeneration phase. But, which, again, we will talk more about uh, the Sri Lanka Sangha after the war because the main focus at least for the first half of this video will be mainly about the war against the Chola to expel them out of the island nation so as we mentioned before we're up against this man this is the the Chola ruler by the name of um, Iraya that's the title and his name is a uh, uh, Vera Rajendra. That's how you say his name, despite the Tamil spelling here of the Chola um, Samarajiam. Although he's compassionate, impatient, zealous, he has an intrigue education, he's also the seducer. So, again, those traits were randomly generated by the game. I don't know if he was actually like that in real life, or real history, I should say. But he also does hold the area down there, just to try to make his presence known. So now, let's get down to business, shall we? It's been over 20 minutes. Fortunately, based on the martial lifestyle, he's gone to the route of Gallant. Stalwart leader. Shaharic dominance. Never back down, which will take much less friendly casualties. Combine that with unyielding defender, which means during the biggest battles we will take less casualties, and we will have more of the advantage, especially that you're f that they're fighting in our in our backyard, basically. Even when we occupy those territories up north, except for those two areas that is considered neutral on the both sides for whatever reason. Even though it's a war of national liberation, one would think. You know, it's a rebellion. And also we have Household Guard, which will give us additional number of knights. Or Radapodas, which is the Singhala word as the equivalent of that. Or whatever you Sri Lanka view is. Whatever. Oh, I'll address that in a moment. Also we have Courtship. Increases romance. And develops scheme power and success. Promising Prospects, Marriage Acceptance, and Loyalty and Respect, which my spouse loves me more, while I get some of the spouse counsel tasks, skills increase from her. Which pretty much tells you that we're both of a military-minded people, so we do have to work together. Especially that she's been giving me plus four assistance from the spouse. Uh, really excellent martial, average diplomacy, poor stewardship and intrigue, while well, average learning. But over time, skills will improve. And also you probably noticed already that um, we have a large number of gold to start off with, which that'll be used for post-war construction. Forgot to select the focus. And knowing that once we defeat the enemy and drive the uh, Cholas out of Tambapani, control is going to be the real issue here. When we, when I will be controlling all these signs, so I will go for authority focus. To rule is to make all aspects of the realm move in unison and work together. So slight increase of the marshal, while increasing a bit of dread, but also increase the control growth. Especially in the post-war years, that is to come. So, it'll be six years time to get the new perk, next perk. So over time, uh, during those post-war years, we gotta get serve the crown, and get strict organization, because we need to control increased up faster before any harm comes to me. Yeah. 
Oh, and of course, um, just the relevance for the uh, Sri Lankan Sangha struggle. I can influence the trajectory of the Sri Lankan Sangha much more if I take the decision to align to the Sri Lankan Monastery. This grants you a trade associate with the monastery you pick. Okay, I have to go here. Choose to officially support one of the three monasteries in Tambapani. The Sangha in Tambapani is divided into many monasteries. The three most important ones, the Mahavihara, the Abhyagiri, and Jetavana, wield much secular and religious power. It could be mutually beneficial if I openly support one of them, thereby raising its prominence. I will choose between getting the patrons of either of these monastery traits, and I'll be able to access the decision to support my chosen monastery and raise its prominence, which is important if you want to resolve the conflicts within the Sri Lankan Sangha. So here's a little bit of historical context before we get on with the wartime business. During late antiquity and medieval period, Sri Lanka's Buddhist monastic community, the Sangha, was dominated by the three monasteries and sects, Mahavihara, Abhigiri, and Jetavana. These three jockeyed for patronage from royals and other elites for centuries, until they were united under the Mahavihara in 1165 as part of the religious reforms supported by King um, Parakramabahu first. The extent of which this was actually a dramatic victory for the Mahavihara or a subtler continuation of gradual trends is debatable. Well, it's time to support a monastery. It's only 40 gold. And of course, as war goes on, we're going to gain gold, especially by looting of occupying the holdings, castle holdings, and as well as ransoming prisoners knowing some of them's got gold on them. And it's going to happen for fairly often. Well, let's support. Let me drink. Uh, it's time to throw... It's time I throw my lot um, behind in one of the main Buddhist monasteries competing for influence at Tambapani. This will have political ramifications, so I need to choose carefully. The Mahavihara, the oldest sect, are traditionalists who reject what they see as unorthodox ideas from India. The Abhyagiri, Abhyagiri blend Mahayana and Vajrayana in their innovative approach to Theravada. The Jetavana, lastly, are the newest sect and also open to Mahayana and Vajrayana beliefs. Look at its prominence. 100 for Mahavihara, 150 for Abhyagiri, 50 for Jetavana. Look at the patron trait. Plus one learning, bit of piety, monthly lifestyle experience. Abhyagiri, on the policy, development growth. Jetavana, this one's stewardship, building construction costs reduced. Useful for post warriors, so I will support the Jetavana. From now on, for various decisions and actions, you may take increase or decrease the prominence of the Lanka's monasteries, especially the Jetavana prominence. So activate aligned with the monastery catalyst. So that goes towards the accumulation phase now that I've chosen a monastery that I've aligned with. Oh yes, established house traditions. A house is nothing but its traditions and values. I'll exemplify the values of this house and codify the proper way to conduct oneself for posterity. It will be based on a set of values. Well, values are determined based on your personality traits. A set of personality traits will become favored or disfavored by future members of your house as they grow up. Time has come to set example for posterity and establish traditions for your house. What do you like the sense to value? Again, I did this in the previous series, but now we're doing this here. So let me do some reading.
Honestly, the better question is, what are the sins and virtues of Theravada Buddhism? Just to remind everybody, Theravada Buddhism. The path of enlightenment goes to personal experience, reflection, and reasoning. Gautama Buddha found his path, his own path to Nirvana, and the only way of fighting a similar way is to experience, learn, and study one's own existence. So the tenets is monasticism, literalism, and dharmic pacifism, which you cannot declare holy wars or raids. These are its sins. Virtues. And of course, this has the Pali Canon Doctrine, which, which the Pali three, three, like <coughs> Hold on, <laughs> a little tongue tied here. The Pali uh, Tripitaka is the canon of Buddhist texts accepted by the Theravada sects of Buddhism in Southeast Asia. Traditionally, the first Pali canon was believed to have been written down as the Fourth Buddhist Council in Sri Lanka in 29 BC, although the canon was still being revised and changed for several centuries afterwards, as Theravada, Mahayana, Vajrayana, and other early Buddhist schools exchanged ideas. Marriage types polygamous, divorce always loud, no such thing as a bastard, all children are equally legitimate. Blood determines lineage, not marriage. Children born out of wedlock are just as legitimate as the any other. So be careful of who you lay with, because everybody's inheritable of whatever title you may have. And unlike the previous series that I did with uh, the Haranians, same-sex relations is accepted, while deviancy is shunned, and so is male and female adultery. Dynastic kid saying is criminal, and witchcraft is shunned. We, the special doctrine here is multi-religious interweaving. Non-Easter faiths with the Eastern syncretism tenet are considered astray instead of evil. Like, say, a Nestorian Christian faith, they have Eastern syncretism. And we Buddhists view them as astray. No problems. Basically. And based on those sins and virtues I saw, the house tradition shall be honor. It favors honest, just, and stubborn traits, while disfavor, deceitful, arbitrary, and favor. We're trying to disfavor deceitful, which is a sin, and favor honest, which is a virtue. Also inspires vassals to affirm their loyalty after a succession which is a useful way to keep the vassals in line. And plus, per level of fame going up, so will the diplomacy and martial skills. While fellow vassals' opinion will be lowered, hostile scheme resistance is also lowered. While lowered is the count hostile county attrition, so we will take less casualties while we'll try to liberate our country. And uh, supply duration lasts longer, as long as I'm leading the army, of course. So the house of tradition shall be honor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One thing I forgot to put together is the council. Who wants to be steward? Clearly there's some better talented people based on skill, so we'll do some swapping around. You are the uh, Badakaria steward. Sapa. You are now the uh, Rahasadikula. The Rahasadikulava. Spymaster. Who wants to be Chancellor? Well, since he's taking that position, I guess you can go for it. Ravideva, you are the, uh, the 
Mahasandivikarhi. So say that again. The the Mahasandivikarhi. Again, it's all Sinhala language, so I'm not familiar with that language, but I've, I've been learning a little. Of which, uh, matter of fact, before I assign one more. So I also want to give you a shout out to any viewers who comes from Sri Lanka or used to live in Sri Lanka, uh, because as many of them do live overseas, uh, be it Sihala or Tamil. So I'll say, uh, well, I do know hello or greetings in Tamil, which is uh, Vanakan, but for Sinhala, um, for Sinhala it's um, Ayobavan. So, Banakam for the Tamil viewers and Ayobavan for for Sihala viewers. And I mean, there are other peoples that do live in Sri Lanka today, but those two are the ones that are most relevant um, as far as population is concerned. But we don't want to get too deeply discussed on that subject. Now, anyways. Who's going to be the marshal? Buddha. You will be the marshal. Or Sinaviran. And by the way, this man in particular, um, he's actually a friend of the Jayabahu. You know, they're friends because Buddha protected the Jayabahu when he was but a young prince in constant danger and on the run from the invading armies of the Cholas. His sense of duty and loyalty is greatly appreciated by Vajayabahu. Mamuraya, he is brave, and generous, and just, and a brilliant strategist as well. He's also uh, an administrator. How about that? He's also a holy warrior. So more advantage to anybody who has the hosti faith hostility, which is, again, if the two face are far apart, they're often able to hold it each other. So far, relations exist. Um, the closeness is decided by several factors of that. So basically, you know, if I don't know if that'll be effective against the uh, mainly Shavite Hindus of the Cholas, since we view them as astray, and same from them back to us. And, uh, but I was also loyal, as he should be, because he's my friend. He kept me alive. And this is the Porohit Maka Sihala. Now, as for you, you don't seem to like me a bit, so I'm willing to sway you. It'll be easy. I'll stop showing you during post-war years, knowing that everyone's gonna have to respect me when I become the United King of Tambapani. Now, the Radapuru, we have 6 out of 10. There's a shortage of men. Seven out of ten now. And those two guests here, they're not good fighters. What are they exactly? Just guests of unremarkable skills. Mm -mm -mm. And of course, before going to war, you need a court physician. And unfortunately, everybody's bad at their craft. And I don't know if I can trust her to treat with the wounded soldiers. So, once again, I'm willing to spend a bit of money on this. Search for a physician. Court physician is essential to care for the sick and wounded in my court. I will ask my servants to bring forth a number of suitable candidates. We'll be presented with a group of court physician candidates and may hire them for a fee and a monthly salary of 0.1 gold. Go look for them. No need to search for anybody else, or to do any other actions. The money will be saved up uh, for the, again, the post-war reconstruction, recontrol, and uh, supporting the monasteries and a few other actions. 
So I guess that just covers about everything. So let's raise the armies. Get down here to Magampura. We have 19 days or so to assemble. You may have noticed that large number of troops that we have. Because as you can see, we have a uh, a lot of levies of Maharada Vijayabahu's host, and additionally, Vijayabahu's Vedakara's guards, which are 800. Which of these are 400 Vedakara, 100 pikes, 200 light footmen, and 100 pikemen? These are men in arms. Now, who are these exactly before we finally get time moving on? The uh, Velakara, or Velakara, are guilds of soldiers who are quite effective in battle and are often deployed as royal guards or protectors of sacred, sacred sites. Which are good against spearmen and archers, do especially well in forest, jungle, and hills, which Lanka is full of it, especially in the southern half of it. And this one here is the unique archers rather than the regular bowmen. Only good against elephant cavalry, even though it's highly doubtful we'll see any war elephants on the horizon. Footmen have been a mainstay of Indian armies for centuries, and no weapon is as common as a simple bamboo bow, which many Indian commoners practice through hunting from a young age. Also do well in forest jungle and hill. Even though most of the fighting is going to take place in the plains. So, uh, let's get to it then. It's war time now. For the liberation of Tambapani. That's our objective. Switch over. I mean, the organized army thing, that's just increased the levy size. And this is all the levies we have deployed. So now, let's switch to train commanders. Over time, the night effectiveness, men at arms damage, and toughness increases monthly. Up to 20% 20 months later. You can see that happen. Oh, she does well for me on all those fields. Get the assist with her, keep that. Alright, all together now. And... Split. Yes, I'm the one with the siege weapons. And the other, Buddha will take the other. Okay. Here's what we're gonna do. I will head up there. And uh, you will head over there. Just gotta head. Then we'll meet up together in Anuradhapura. By that time, hopefully. And then eventually make the funnel so towards uh, Yaupapanam. Yaup. Uh, the uh, Yaupanam. That's just. You've got to get used to the Sehala and Tamil pronunciation of name places. Which again, I'm not 100% fluent on either of these two languages. Uh, I mean, based on years of exposure, I actually know Tamil a little better than Sinhala. By exposure, I mean media. You know, movies and TV from Tamil Nadu, those sort of things. The world is full of dangers, even to a Maharada and his court. I shall hire a court physician lest injury or disease befall us. I have asked around for recommendations and have assembled a few options to choose from. Aptitude is terrible, your aptitude is average. Well, average is better than poor. 
You make a good chancer, but need powerful vassals. He's shy, but he's a physician. Now it's physician. So apparently he's quite experienced. So I'll pay him 25. And that's going to be the last thing I'm paying for. Although I may have to during wartime. But not in terms of construction. Or other things that may come over the years. For you, you just ain't good at anything. So come on in. Each exceeds the stress. As I'm embarking in the management of my realm, my council has asked me to pay a cardinal attention to my stress. I was informed that my stress will slowly go up if I engage in offensive wars that tax my intellect, my emotions, and my morals. Whereas I'm at peace, it will slowly decrease a long time. Of course, the rate of curing stress for offensive warfare is very different if someone is a compassionate, forgiven individual. Or if one is callous, or sadistic one. In the first case, stress will build up much faster than the last. Similarly, when in peace, a calm, patient individual will lose much will lose stress much faster than a wrathful and patient one. With the certainty these various will happen silently and along the life of a character. That stressed characters on average live shorter lives than unstressed ones. One must be careful to consider his or her behavior in a world of dark ages. Again, part of the Dark Ages mod. Beginning of siege, and we could see about 90 days the army of the Cholas are getting together. We'll just let them be. If they want to attack us, they're more than welcome to do so. Siege weapons. And as for you over there. Oh, 15 months? Okay, change of plans. Once I'm done with my siege, I'm gonna come down and assist you. The Chola has allied with all the heck way up there. There ain't no way they're gonna play the role of this by the time they get here. And also, do you see that current prominence? It went down for Mahavihara and Jatavana, but none for Abilgiri. While well, I gained a tiny bit of prestige and piety. Mm. My Senevarat, Buddha, my friend. He's been showing how promising you recruit. He may be not he may not be as noble stock as you, my friend. What on my name, I swear that um Digus Sumana uh, Digus Sumana is someone you would want on your side. There he is. He shall serve me. But be aware. bounce things out here. You're gonna be linked with Budo. So you two go get him. It's the new guy and the court physician. Great. During the morning briefing today, my father Akeria, steward, made an important point regarding the management of my domain. Something that highlights the cost of major infrastructure investments for my counties to reach their full potential. As it is, I must be prepared to fund major infrastructure projects every 10 levels for the provinces to continue their development. Unless I have a stewardship of 21 or I'm an architect, then the costs of have it. The calculated minimum gold I must have on the treasury to be able to fund such development for province is the following. Look at this. It increases to further development to go. Padita also made a point in telling me that these values might not be enough to cover the full price required, but at least he guarantees that the church can support the individual debt incurred. 
Thank you very much for the information. Noted for post war. The time has come for me to plan ahead on what angle of my normal life uh, will, that will concentrate the efforts over the next decade. Investing my fortune in one of the passive level, it is certain that my choice will carry deep consequences for my personal achievements as a person and as a ruler. Jeez, these all cost. This one costs the least. But knowing that I'm a just man, a man of justice, a man of honor, I will focus on improving a lot for, of my peasants. I'll lose the dread, which I don't even have to begin with. Plus it costs less gold. And I uh, lose some of that stress which I've been gaining as the war goes on. So we're gonna have to. They joined the war, but it's gonna take a long time for them to get here. My offensive wars are progressively causing economic and social impacts on the population of my domain. Forced conscription, lack of people to attend to the fields and services, and a general feeling of despair are causing a significant toll on my populace. As things stand, I cannot further avoid some pernicious effects of the unpopular war I'm fighting on the population I lead. Let's hope the war doesn't last long. This event only happens because you are fighting an offensive war. The modifiers applied will be removed. After, will soon be removed after the realms at peace again. So Rohana has war exhaustion. The control level just went down. Ooh. That hurts the holding taxes, in a popular opinion, down big time. I was supposed to focus on improving the peasants, but now clearly that doesn't seem to be the case. The thought has been playing in my mind due to these times of war the realm is experiencing. As things stand, I might attempt to form a new contingent of levies by increasing the range of normal draft age and adding a lot of common criminals who might provide a pardon in order to improve the number of troops available for my armies. These radical policies come at a significant cost to prestige of piety, as it can be portrayed as desperate and callous measures but a possibility is tempting. No, it is a path I will not tread. As a just man, I will not allow criminals to, to take part in, in this war, because we don't want rowdy soldiers. Our strength is good enough. I've been through a lot for more than a decade. No. Don't want to alienate the populace any further. Thanks to authority focus, um, the monthly control will go up slowly, bit by bit, as the war drags on. of influence. When Ratalu Ralideva of uh, Malaya by Mahasandivigai uh, offered me his full effort and extortion, uh, extortion of improve my standing among my peers and the populace of my domain. In exchange for furthering his own personal agenda within the council, I stand facing a dilemma on my soul. If I agree on the pact with my um, chancellor, I will alienate the other counselors and risk their wrath. How well do you know me? He's an honorable altruist, trusting. He's a nice person. If I agree, I will gain prestige and some renown. While the Rata of Rohana will gain propaganda for five years and get the control up. Although he will get a weak favor on me. While my uh, <laughs> hit will lose the opinion towards him, will stop endorsing me, as well as all the other counselors, because they'll be livid of me if I do this. Although my friend will still be happy with me no matter what. While this here, control growth up a little faster, will get the popular opinion back up. Or I can publicly rebuke uh, 
the attempt. Which he won't be happy with me. While the counselors stay on my side. I'm thinking. Doesn't cost money, right? No. But gets a weak favor on me. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Honestly. So I would agree to Paul's general. Again. He's a trusting person. And I am a just man. Although I have my own ambitions. But my ambition is to liberate the island nation from the children. So I'll agree then. Although this is going to alienate everybody. All the more reasons why I have to sway him. And then I'll sway her back on my side. The glory is widely known. And I got some renown, which is always good. in my tent, the siege camp sprawls out before me. A jumble of grey and shapeless canvas, militant industry, men, women, all accompanied by the excessive drone of the flies. Pennants and pennons of every colour wave stiffly back and forth in the persistent wind. Figures hunch over the campfires, tossing on wood or brushing sheepskins clean. My low retainer approaches and informs me that the siege is ended. I gather my bodyguards head to the edge of the camp. The Kotam of Tirukolmalai. Tirukolmalai. That's that's the Tamil name for Trin Trinakomali. Trinkomali. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Trinko, as some locals would call it for short. Stands for me. A shambles, a bird shell, and the fields between the dead and dying lied piled. Wounded men beg for water. Unburied bodies are heaped in a gruesome mass grave, and row upon row of arrow pierced shields mark the outlines of hasty ramparts. Heart, heart rending cries uh, and wailing carry across the land, uh, smoke uh, wafts over the fields and hillsides. My men look from every direction. Gotta keep the stress down. And as a just man, I say, spare it, because this is a liberation war. We will liberate our land. We don't loot our own land, unless we don't have any money, but we have much. Spare it. And honestly, imprison them all. And I have a reason for that, for this rationale. That is for, in case if some of the characters are willing to ransom, to give me some gold that I have been spending, that, that we need the gold for it. And a plus to keep it around, and when the post-war years comes, after the war is over, I will recruit some skilled characters to my court. And then release the rest of them. No one is getting executed, because that is unjust. So we'll imprison everyone that we see. Let's go help my friend, because apparently he's taking longer than anticipated. Heading down to Anuradhapura. All right, additional taxes. He's going out to sea. Okay, fair enough. So buy us time. Also, by the way, in this holding of uh, it's in Odessa. Oh, look, there's more. Tamil band of Kudanad. Captain Yonahan. Tamil mercenaries. <laughs> the famous Silk Road peddlers passing through this area. Also, you see this area I'm, I'm pinpointing its location to? Columba. That is where the modern capital of Sri Lanka, Colombo, 
is located. There. It just it hasn't been built yet at that time. Whereas the old capital was was Anuradhapura. And now they did your capital says it's down there. In um, Rayagama. You 12 months you say. 11 months, and now it'll take 6 months. And Leda Vati is pregnant. I mean, after all, she's lost also. Increases fertility, so there's that tendency. They're going back. Are they getting together? They're probably going to have to go liberate the train Komali. That's probably where they're going to go. Hopefully we'll beat him to it. Unless I have to break off. Yeah, they're going there. No? Well, what are they doing then? A traveler from a faraway land is visiting me today. It appears my reputation precedes me. Because after exchanging pleasantries with the traveler, he said jokingly, I've heard about you and your honeyed words. Is that so? And am I that great of a speaker? I mean, it's good. And I'm vicious, and I'm a man of honor. Which, by the way, level of fame went up, so... Diplomacy, skill, along with uh, martial, increased. Better to sway your spine, I see. They don't have siege weapons, neither is the mercenaries. Guess we'll have to engage them once we're done here. Fortunately, it's normal on this part, no disease. Get ready to move. Capture the local ruler. He'll pay. 50 gold. And his son too. I exit my tent. The siege camp sprawls out before me. A bristling mass of tents, shacks and lean-tos. Of wood and mud and shit. Flags and standards flutter in the fading light. Shouts and cries ring through the damp air. My lord retainer approaches and informs me that the siege is ended. I gather my bodyguards head to the edge of the camp. The Kotam of, of Kelania stands for me. A tattered glimmering pennant fluttering from the highest tower. Its flames raging to the pre-dawn sky. And the fields between the dead, uh, the dead lie heaved in massive piles. Makeshift defenses to the onslaught of arrows. The corpses of butchered warriors litter the roads. Frightened survivors stumbled, bloodied, through courtyards, panic set on my troops. Spare it, again, our territory. And imprison everyone you see. Now we gotta go defeat that army. Actually, hold that thought. Stop! But they're gonna successfully retake this. Let's trade. I want all the fighters, all the good fighting men, to come with me. As I said, trade. All this, they, and the Mangonels will go to Budos. You're going to be the new siege force. I'd rather be fighting. So, 
Plus, that's on what I'd put up there. So, you will begin the work to siege up, up there. Because I want to get ahead of time. While I will deal with them on my own. With our best fighters. Like you would. Oh, they're gonna liberate it. Too late. Chase them down. They're likely gonna head for um, Madakalapula. Sir Runawara will be the area where it will be fought. No. Come on. Catch up. Oh, they're gonna go after my friend. Got to keep running parallel to it, do we? Okay, we're finally gonna. No, we're not gonna catch him. He will not escape. This is a chase across the island. This is ridiculous. Praise Viru Daka. Blade of Atis will give birth to a perfect little son. Will you become my child? Should I call you? Name after my father. Yes. May you grow to be strong and wise, my son. Getting us nowhere. They're gonna keep getting away from us no matter what. Split up. We're gonna try to give them a false sense of security here. See too if you can oh, make them run this way. Just try to cut them off. They're going to be heading to, um, what is this area called? Paruku. Paruka. Paruka. That's where the battle will finally be fought. Yes, we will catch them here in the jungles of Paruka. And at the same time, um, Anuradapura. The siege of it will continue for another two months. Whereas we sent all our men at arms and our best fighters for now to here. That's how much we're committed. Although they said that defending a jungle and more men at arms, because there's this is neutral territory, because this is to land but jungle. But you know, as a precaution, over time, you may want to invite the Radapuru over here. Get some more able-bodied men. Since there's a shortage of that, then we do need to fill up the ranks a little more. Knowing that this battle may potentially be costly, but do not worry. I am an unyielding defender. Again, four days. No escape. So, battle begins. You'll be here in nine days. So hopefully, get here in nine days before. We'll, I mean, we're already outnumbered. He has the cavalry, but we have the right footmen and a lot of car fighting in favorable terrain. And we'll be receiving reinforcements, but also fights in favorable terrain. I have more advantage than the uh, Irayas himself. We're both zealous in our each other's religions, but 
let's hope that the skill of our fighters will make the difference here. We have the advantage, we're giving them a big hurt. I've wounded one of their men. In fact, you just wounded a man that I've just spotted. Prepare to fight. Through blood and horror, I seize the chance to face up against a uh, uh, Kolotunka, serving under the Uvaraya's command. After a brief look around, I do not spot any immediate threat which could disturb the upcoming duel. Only one should prevail. He's brave, arrogant, ambitious, diligent. He's also a holy warrior, even. Also, he's just been wounded by one of my uh, brother Buddha. I'll take advantage of this, though this may kill him at the, the end of the duel because he's already wounded. For a few brief moments, um, Nada, Nada, uh, Kolotunga, and I pace in laser half circles, each watching for an opening. I held my sword, ready to defend myself while he clutches his sword from in hand. This fight may be only till first blood, but that doesn't ease my nerves. Of a sudden twitch, our battle begins. Kolotunka uh, cracks his neck, then starts raining blows against my guard. A marathon of powerful cleaves that almost break me with, relents, with their relentless ferocity. He's a wounded man, so I'll just try to win the duel by any means. So, a blow from my sword and a kick to the gut. Put the boot in. I'll combine a heavy attack with an unexpected kick to his vitals. Beat him quickly. Way to go. With a powerful cleave from my sword, I send him reeling backwards, and then step to the blow and kick him straight to the chest. He shifts, uh, suddenly shifts direction, throwing him sideways to a powerful cleave that I'm just barely able to dodge. My form is decent with some lapses. Stands formidable. My opponent's guard is fierce, and I feel far from victory. He's wounded. I'm not yet wounded, so I'm a fair man, so I'll, let's see how you do about your sword. Attempt to disarm him. Try to remove his weapon. One colossal powerful cleave from my sword almost is almost enough to wrench his sword away from him, but he just manages to recover. Well aware that he's utterly outmatched. Your own self enemy bodily forcing me backwards while the desperation of the doomed. My form's deteriorating fast, with numerous exploitable gaps. Stance formidable. Yet to open up my opponent's guard on us, no way yet to claim victory. Strike, parry, repulse, throw a flurry of rapid attacks and counters. I leap into action, watching a flurry of quick slashes, drawing myself hard against his guard, wearing a down of each exploit time strike. The sword moves into a lazy defense position, he begins shouting me down. His tone, his tone, what would one use for a misbehaving surf, not a Maharada? The form is still deteriorating, but his stance is passable. Opponent's guard is fierce. Trying to break that bastard down. Not to mention he's giving me a dual handicap as well. That just happened just now. I'll show you how I half the sword. Just a confident attack. With skill and poise, I make a series of well placed strikes. Confidence is half of any fight. I th and I throw out fluidly quick slashes of all the confidence of the season expert. Colato God does his best to warn me off, but he's entirely on the defensive. And this guard is only getting weaker and sloppier each blow. When the opportunity presents itself, I knock his sword flying with one powerful cleave. And like that, the battle is decided. I get my heel before I even entered my backswing. I'm victorious. Since he was already wounded, now he's severely injured. That's what happened, huh? The battle continues. What now? Victory is yours, Zabu Mercy. Helpless and defenseless for the time being. The main battle is far from over, and the law that previously surrounded Sino fade away. This was merely a skirmish in the grand scheme of things. 
But no, no, the sound what? Or the be. Look, I would not kill a man in cold blood, because in Dharavada we don't tolerate violence against fidels and astray. Eighty-three percent chance of imprisoning him. Plus, he's a landed character, so he's got to have money. So you're coming with me. Question is, did I get him? Yes. I'll pay up. Fifty gold. Your war is over. Another one of their men. All right. Head back to Trinco. Narendra Sinha. He's a good fighter, but he's a bleeder. Careful. It'll do. That was a good money's worth. Hmm. Ransom. I step out of my tent, the siege camp sprawls up before me. A jumble of mud huts and tents under a pug of choking dust, alcohol, and sweat. Standards and cutters flap and snap in the wind, leaning against the bare rocks that rise on the earth. Gulls circle above, calling to one another with shrill cries. People bustle about, loading meals and checking supplies. A thin column of smoke climbs above the camp, and the smell of cooking fires fills the air. While over ten approaches and informs the siege, then I get my bodyguards head to the edge of the camp. The Gamma Anurata Port stands before me. A gaping circle of crumbling walls surrounded by desperate and dying people. In the fields between the dead and dying line are scores upon scores of black slaughtered corpses. Scourged bodies hang from charred branches. A punishment, no doubt. For some misdeed during the siege. Shocks of iris stumble from the wreckage and pulled loved ones from the piles of twisted bodies. Spare it. And imprison everyone you see. Head to them. Keep going. Until you can't afford anymore. The things we do. A touch of salt in the cream. That's how Lady Vate prepares our tea. It's delicious. I once saw her sitting on the balcony by. Excuse me. I once saw her sitting by the balcony with a tray of berries, and I had a mischievous itch to snatch the last few when she wasn't looking. Slowly I crept up behind her, and as I slipped my hand near, I noticed she was already watching me over there. I already saved those for you, love, she says to me. Sometimes I think that there is no one I would rather spend my time than with my wife. All the things we do in this life, we enjoy so many of the same ones. Life can be shared in many ways. Common interest. Three months. The great construction plan. By today's mid-morning, I was approached by my Adagaria with a radical idea to implement a plan developing the core foundations to provide my domain counties as the basis for a special building of a new infrastructure there. In effect, and following his guidelines, I can invest now a significant sum of gold to enjoy lower construction costs in the next 10 years in my counties. Of course, it will all depend on Pura Pandana Padida of Kateragama's skill to pull off the whole trick, or perhaps take it a page from the original plans, depending on my own skills and traits. Hmm. So, 
Influence of the positive outcome is good stewardship skill and the existence of the architect trait. Negatively, the outcome is average to low stewardship and a lack of education. Well, he does have the education. Or I'll do it, where I can be inspired by the ideas and implement it. Increased prestige and renown are expected. I don't have good stewardship skill. I'm not an architect. So I'll ask him to implement the plan then. Doesn't cost much, but it'll do. We can get Trinko back before they take on a rather quarterback. Small breach. Almost a renowned physician, keep it up. My Vatican miserably failed in planning and implementing the expansive infrastructure operations he was overseeing in my domain. Significant resource was squandered. Time was lost and my patience with them grows thin. Very thin. Rats! Can't you council members cooperate? We have to break off. Um, come with me. You gotta head down to Rada Porta. You finish it. Did the control lower even more? Yes. The prison never won you save. Even though they were already in prison before. Eggs in my tent seats because camp smells of home. A maze of tarps and wagons with hundreds of tents dotting the landscape. You see a white canvas. Fierce flags bearing heroic birds are spread across the barren crags. Everything is covered in a thick sheen of grey damp like a mud laden lake. My little retainer approached me and sees them. Got him, my bodyguard said they had to come. I got them a tree cone. <clears throat> a wreckage of burning wood and broken stone. In the fields between, the dead and dying heaped in grotesque mounds. The smell of rotting flesh hangs heavy in the air. Heated with the fierce, copper set of blood. Gone are the cottages and strange rock formations, dotted with blue wildflowers. Bodies scattered. Uh, bodies lie scattered through the fields. Many of the women and children fled weeks ago. The gates were demolished, survivors huddled in the rubble. Clutch babies in our chest. Spare it again. We can handle it. Head to Yalpa 9. Reinforcements just arrived. It's the mercenary band. Telugu band of Vingapoda. Now I need your endorsement again. As the war drags on. Will we catch them all? No. We're able to catch the mercenaries. Which fortunately they were recently disembarked. So we'll make short work of it. But unfortunately they're going to get away. You've wounded the commander. The captain himself. We got him. You got money. No. We know what to do. Split up. Head here. And I will head over here. See if we can catch him. Which we will. To make my Porto Hitmaka more susceptible to the attempts at approaching Ark, include a compliment in my next mission to the call. Unmatched people skills at the discretion of Buddha. Ravideva, you're going after him? It's to be fought 
in the plains of Vandegama. That's good. We'll have more advantage. No advantage of jungles. Just the edge of it. So that's where the fighting shall be. Battle started. I will arrive in three days, just in time. A recent correspondence has been a source of joy for me. I can help but think that we might both benefit from increased communication. We have a bit of a disadvantage because he got a good battle roll on him. My son made one of their men. Excellent. He took more casualties than usual. Not anymore. Way to go. So he'll be heading back to Tamil Nadu. For now, station over in Marachi um, to and the other, it's the other side in um, Maradankak. Oh God, <laughs> Maradankadwala. Uh, Once we have all the land, we can link up together. Ah, yes, the recruits. Huh? Blessings upon your nails. I've been a good vassal to you. Surely you understand I have my own subjects, too. My current contract is very restrictive. Sure, you could see the wisdom making it more lenient. And besides, you do owe me. Ah, yes. Fortification rights granted. Hmm. The vassals are granted the right to construct new castles and fortifications to support the liege. This support package means that the vassal pays 10% less tax than what field tax obligation dictates. Hmm. I guess. I'm reminded. Who is that man that arrived? Dharmapala, yes. You're also competent steward. Come on in. We need recruits to join us. Come up here. Quickly. Step out of my tent. Siege camp falls up before me. A chaos of improvised creations, sh shimmering gold in a low morning light. Flags flutter in the stiff northwestern breeze. Colors stark and bright against the dune sky. Here and there in the tents and makeshift shelters, men huddle over fires, their faces smudged and gleaming with rain. Low retainer approaches and forwards you that the siege is ended. Got it again. <coughs> they call them of Yapalnan. Yalpanem stands for me. A gaping circle of crumbling walls surrounding a desperate and dying people. Built trained amongst the huge stumps of once foggy saplings. I see the dead piled high, hellish, rotting bodies littered in the streets. Some lying face down in pools of blood, others flayed in every manner. Limbs bent at grotesque angles. Green widows and orphans search through the ash and rubble for the bones of their loved ones. Spirit. Now. Pay up. Unless you can't anymore. If they come back through Devani, we'll be ready. War score will be taken up with time. All 
What's that ally of theirs? The man himself. Let's go meet him. You come down here too. Not too far. Don't let him link up. A legendary blade master. Excellent. You're with us now. Paruka. They'll have the advantage. But be careful. Do not underestimate them. I'm here. You're fighting some of the ass. Get over here. Here we have the advantage. My son's been wounded. One of ours has also been maimed. Spine master. He's got a sword as well. Not gonna read too much of that because honestly I'm a little tired of talking. <laughs> Blow for my sword and kick to the gun. Oh. Form is non existent. A risky move could mean defeat. Tire him. It becomes harder for to injure myself. It's not the best you've got, you can't even hit me. There you go, you're coming back. Former's good with only small errors, but probably cleave. Oh, that's a damn it. I hate it when that happens to me. So now he's got more of an advantage than me. That means I'm gonna make it have to make an irrational decision. Strike pair of pulse. He knows a different kind of Buddhist. So he summons some of my guard. Taste the wrath of out of the spa. He got me this time. Throw powerful cleave after powerful cleave at my opponent. Ceaseless hail blows that connect everything until they don't. Instead, my sword sighs into pure nothingness, and I feel something weighty hook around the back of my knee and pull. I already have to swing around, trying to bring my weapon to bear, and I get a face full of fists for my troubles. As I reel, a firm blow wrenches my sword away, and immediately becomes clear that I've lost. You'll rue the day. I've been injured. Oh, it's a severe injury. Paint shoots up my body with every step. Even the smallest movements leave me gasping. Does it bring the hand up to gingerly touch my wound? Oh, my trouble. My blood drips down myself. Not to worry, my lord, your wound's deep. But my knowledge is deeper. You're an out position. Do no more what is necessary. You know, it could take a miracle to get rid of severely injured.
Oh, I'm gonna do something stupid. It's too late for caution. I'm in the middle of a battle. Heal me now. When Sit out a lit a fire in my chambers, I presume he meant for the heat to fill balance my chambers. However, as the system begins to strap me down a bit, I notice the iron rod heating up in the flames. Having lived through that treatment, I have a hard time finding joy in my body's recovery. But now I'm on the mend. I will live to see another day. Oh, well, I'm already treated, but this is no way to get rid of this. If there's an opportunity to do it, I'm avoiding it at all costs. And since I'm severely injured, my advantage has been lowered. <sighs> Hardy bastards. You know, don't ever underestimate them. Just be glad they didn't fight in the higher elevations. Go, go, go. Or score will increase. One more battle and we will win. And this one man, Sri Chandra. <laughs> 52 days. Will arrive. 37. Come on, faster! We gotta scare him away. You see this large force coming through. I'm risking my own life here. Buddha, you're the one that's gonna engage first. My friend. Will we be there in time before the next siege event? Oh, starvation. The battle will begin in seven days, so we'll be able to get it here just in time. It's all levies, but reinforcements will be coming soon. Don't worry. Valiant soldiers wounded one of them. That's the Telugu mercenary. As I lie in bed, constrained by my wounds, I have time to reflect on the meaning of life and how tenuous my grasp of it all is. My fate rests partly on my constitution, partly on the care I receive, but mostly on luck. As time passes, our conclusion approaches, but in the end, I'm ready to accept my destiny. Let's hope for the best. Twelve percent chance that I'll die. 17% chance I'll lose severely, injured and become either scarred or maimed. 52% chance I'll lose severely injured. Oh, it's gone. I'm just scarred. Visibly wearing the memories of battles or accidents. Majeba who is noticeably scarred. Reinforcements are moved. Should we fight one more battle and defeat them? Since they're heading that way. Movement locked. Who was this man that defeated me in a duel? Kurt Don Sodri, the spy master. You know what? With me. And you too. With me. As the Rata Rothana increases development, there are several additional needs in terms of infrastructure for the county to receive, achieve its full potential. Roads, bridges, aqueducts, public Baths, sewers, basic health care facilities, and much more in demand across the county for it to continue to grow. 
Unfortunately, all these facilities cost going on. I don't want to require a foot to build. That's good for the moment. 50 gold. One last battle. I want to get a little bit of vengeance for defeating me in the duel. Never mind, he's been killed by Naranja Sinha. Instead, I face Donyo. Who's sadistic? Hmm. Be on the defensive, huh? Well, I'll hit him hard. Kick to my chest. Form is decent with some lapses. The stand is possible. Opponent's guard is fierce. Well, both of my sword kicks I got. You did it to me? Well, I'll do it to you. But lower. The hell. Strike pair of hmm. He's doing that to me, I'll do that same move to you. No foe breaks my guard. My opponent today is no exception. I force him back time and again with a chain of perfect prairies. Only offering a devastating, powerful cleave when he's utterly exhausted. As he hurls backwards, I hurl with him, bringing my sword's palm down on his face. I don't feel conscious quite as visually satisfying as that. Stunned and sapped, my opponent claps to the floor, losing his weapon in the process. He's so tired it takes a modest amount of studious kicking to get a fish wheel. Victorious. Well, you're coming with me. Got all, and we got the man himself. It's big money. After he's released, we officially end the war. Good. Right on, 4th of July. <laughs> Three years long. One year short of 1070, that's when the actual official ending in real life of the Jayabahu's Rebellion. Finally over. Thank goodness. Now, let's um, let's go home, cause that war was very deadly. But now, uh, now that the event spawn troops went mostly away. But now I will travel home, travel along the coast, back to Magampura, and then from there we will do the last acts for this first episode, which, quite honestly, I thought this war was going to be an easy one, and then for the rest of the video I will explain more of the, uh, the Sri Lanka Sangha struggle and all the other things, but... We spent a lot of time fighting this war, so we don't have time for that. That'll be for the second episode, that'll be coming up immediately after this one. So for now, let's just go home. Yeah, I'm on a move. What's the control? To mention it was conquered twice. Did I do that? 
recently loaded. We didn't do that. That is a... This land's devastated. Hey, you line with a monastery from Vani. Jetavana. Good man. Alright, I'm back. The war ended on 4th of July, and I just came back uh, more than a month later. It took a while, but I'm here. So now, mercenary queens is ready. Can take small donation to the Mahabodhi. Oh, you'll accept vassalization from me. How about you up there? much more reluctant because he's arrogant. Mm. Learning his language uh, would be helpful. But do we really have time for that? It's swearing it would be very easy. Uh, we'll try to get him on our side, and then maybe we'll have a chat, you and I. But there are other ways, and that is to form the Kingdom of Tambopani. Which, to do that, you need a duchy. You already have the Maharajya of Rohana, but there is another I'd be willing to form. Duchy of Mayurama. We have lots of gold for that. Oh, speaking of which. Any prisoners that's willing to be ransom, to pay for their own ransom, you can all leave. The rest of the prisoners will stay and I will deal with them in the next episode. Because I'll be willing to recruit some talented people, if they have the skills to do so. And I will deal with the control and all that. Don't you worry, because we're about to form the uh, Kingdom title very soon. That's step two. And now, form the Kingdom of Tambapani. Which is going to be one of the last acts of this episode. Because the war took up a lot of the episode where I decide that the the uh, rebuilding process and regaining control and all that, that will be covered in the next episode. I am now a mighty Agarada. Yes. I can hold the court, but there's no need for that. Also, one second. Okay. Now, are you willing to join? Yes. Offer vassalage. Even though you are a fickle man. Join up. Here's some 10 gold to make some money back. You are now my vassal, but you may not like me because many things. We have our differences in traits, different patrons. And also, yes, we had a recent offensive war, which wasn't popular to the masses. But if you want to see it on a council, 
you might be so. You might have a chance, but give me a moment. Now, will you join us? Oh, just almost. I mean, the easiest thing in the world would be just to send him a gift. That's a hundred. So, we will not do that. A oh, nice, um... Hmm. Let me just read that. To be successful in this interaction, you need to rely on a positive difference to rank to your target. High diplomacy on the very high diplomacy, my chancellor. On a good opinion of your target about you. On being a diplomat, being shrewd, gregarious. Conversely, the number of alliances you already have, which I have none. Low diplomacy to your target. The negative rank to your target. Negative opinion of your target about you. If I'm dull, provide penalties to the attempt. Yeah, let's just have a negotiated alliance between us. And then you join us. But bearing in mind, he's somewhat generous and somewhat bold, so he's half and half. I'll think about that. The other alternative is to offer, send a hostage as insurance you will not attack him. Maybe that would improve relations, will it not? Let me see. Earn prestige and renown. Target. Didn't say anything about increased opinion. So, no, not that option. I think a ward would have to. I mean, honestly, hell like that I'd give it him over time, but that's my son. Again, I'm hypo doing hypotheticals, alright? Again, so close to get him in, because I don't want to fight in another war. Especially that we're trying to recover our strength here, bit by bit. So we'll just t let time tick along, really quick. Secondhand glamour. It's my Radhapura and my Rajapurui. Finest raiments in the land, Maka. Uh, mostly because they ain't from this land. Charles, um, Degosumana. Degosumana. As I walk past his open chamber, his voice loses charm, but even so, my other courtier seems unsure to pitch. Almost new, just as good as new. And fresh from the tread centers of, of Irai's uh, court. These are what everyone in Achola uh, Samarajia will be wearing next season. He was disfigured during a war. I, was, I would say, who cares what people wear? There's other pressing matters. Okay, you know what? Let's make this last move for before we'll close this episode. Establish alliance. A brighter future together. Negotiations were difficult in what I believe was a good faith. The sum I part of the impress you know, was the money well spent. In the end, we were happy to compliment ourselves as partner and allies. Excellent. You know, had I sent a bit of gift, it would have been a hundred gold. But this is eighty-two. Just to, you know, get a little. All right. Now, will you join? Yes, he won't. Are they? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Again, that's part of the Dark Ages mod, so I guess that Negotiated Alliance thing is probably new, and we don't have Marriage Over Troubles. 
But do not worry. We'll get him in. We'll get him in. So, again. We'll do that by swing, which will take about a year or so. And then he'll be with us. So that way in the next episode we will move to a new capital from Rohana to uh, to this area here, Polonava, which is actually in the Rata of Polonava. Despite the fact that there is a holding called Polonava, but that's due to the, um, oh, what's that mod called again? Oh, more provinces expanded. So, yeah, there you go. So we hope you enjoyed this long episode, <laughs> and we'll be more focused on the uh, post-war, you know, focus more on the uh, post-war reconstruction of this broken land here. So we'll get everything together again. So we'll see you in the next episode. That's coming very soon. But until then, so long for now.